Okay, I'm going to do a short tutorial in here on how to approach and fish uh, breezing tuna or tuna that are feeding in a straight line as opposed to foamers and the other things that we've been seeing a lot. Over the last month I've seen had quite a few instances where the fish were either breezing or feeding on whale, you know, with whales and things like that where these fish are moving as opposed to being stationary uh, with the foamers that we've been seeing a lot of. And this is a, uh, it's easy enough to catch them this way sometimes. Other times it can be really tough, but um, if you don't know what you're doing, it's uh, d d almost impossible at times. So, uh, a breezer is going to show up in a few different ways on your when you see them under water. It could be it's kind of tough to see in this picture, but if you see my mouse, there's a dark spot in the water. Other times there'll be a ripple that looks different from the rest of the water. It could be a color spot. You can see fish shining in the swell, but it's going to be uh, something that's going to look different. As you can see on the left-hand side of the screen here, there's a few boiling fish, but those fish are really on the leading edge of that breezer. And if you don't approach them properly, you're going to run over all these fish behind them and really decrease your chances of catching them. So, what's happening with these breezers is that these fish are moving in a direction, and on the leading edge of it are the fish that are actually hunting for food. The most aggressive ones are going to be at the leading edge of this. So, this bird here action just kind of shows you what can happen. These front fish find some food. They start uh, getting bait up. You want to get a cast on it. In this instance, there's a whale on these fish as well. That's why the water looks so slicked out behind it. But you want to basically put your boat in a position to get your lure to where those fish are going to be when, actually before they get there, so that when they do move towards where you're at, your lure is already going to be in front of them. Um, the best way to do that is to look for... For birds and there's not always birds on them but more often than not there's feeding fish you'll have some turns and also some uh, uh, shearwaters and the, the shearwater is a brown bird these birds with with breezing fish are actually the better indicator than the turns are of fish that are about to come to the surface to feed while the turns will get back on the fish a bit they're, they're more agile they can pick fish off mid-school they can pick bait fish off mid-school those shearwaters the brown ones are going to be right on the leading edge of that stuff and usually ahead of it. So if you see some birds and or let's say you see some fish boiling and you see some turns on them and 100 feet ahead of those you see five or six shearwaters hauling ass away from those birds that are up, those shearwaters are putting themselves where you want to be in the next 30 seconds because they, they're watching what the direction those fish are going and they're going, they're going to get there ahead of it. And a lot of times when you see uh, breezes of the fish, you'll just see it but you'll think you see boils it's just sheer water hitting the water at the front of the school. There's tuna directly under them. They are leaving the tuna. And a lot of times I see those sheer water, they'll just run the boat right up past them and wait for them to come into me and get a cast in there. And those tuna are directly below those things every time. So, now let's talk a little bit about these breezers. And I've seen it over the last week, I saw, you know, schools of 15 pound to 150 pound bluefin and schools of 20 to 50 pound yellowfin all breezing up on the surface, all looking like this and not wanting to bite. What I mean here, they're, they're boiling, as you can see, but with the boils in different parts of the school, there's no direction these fish are going. They could go this way, there's fish going down, there's fish boiling within the within the breezer in places. There's really nowhere you can put your boat <clears throat> and make a cast and have a good shot of getting bit because these fish are just all feeding in different directions. The school is really loose shape. It's not directional you can't predict where they're going to come up next so what you do with this situation a lot of times end up right where the boils are and you cast and then the boils pop up 50 feet away or 100 yards away on the other side of the school can't get to it without running through it i'm not saying you're not going to catch fish or in a school like this but the chances of doing it you need a lot of luck and you know you're probably not going to get a bite the good news is you get a whale on a school like that and if that whale comes back and chases bait into that school, it's going to turn into a directional and feeding school. In this instance here, this was off data point a few years ago, this whale ran it, it was feeding on a school of anchovy, the tuna that were not biting and just breezing along got on that anchovy, and every time that whale swam back through that anchovy school, the bluefin tuna would come up biting it. So that's kind of, a, that's kind of something that could ha make things happen. So if you, if you have a whale out here and it doubles back and heads towards your breezer, you want to put your boat in a position to cast where that whale is going to intersect that breezer because that's now you suddenly have a, a leading edge again. So, 
speaking of leading edges, this is a, the blue again is the School of Swimming Fish. We actually have a swimming direction. A lot of times you have to pull up and watch them. If there's no birds on them, you'll have to sit there and watch and see which way they're going. And uh, on days when there's some swell, you can see those tuna shining in the swell, and it makes it really easy to figure out because you can actually see the silhouette of the fish, and the fish is going to be pointing in the direction of swimming. So, usually when these fish are like that, they'll show at the leading edge of it. So you'll see boils, or you'll see flashes of the fish near the surface. They'll be shining more at the front edge than that. Again, a lot of guys want to drive up and cast right to where they see those boils. Um, by the time your jig hits the water, those fish that are feeding are going to be way past your lure, and the fish that are behind it aren't necessarily going to be biting it. So you want to put your boat into a position where you can make a cast, get that lure into the water, and begin to work that lure before those fish, the front fish get to you. And the front fish could be, again, if you see fish on the surface, the, even if you see boils, the leading fish could be 20 or 30 feet ahead of those fish. So I'll go an extra long distance. I might even get two or three casts on before I actually see the fish get to me, or I might get bit the second my lure hits the water. So proper boat position. You don't drive anywhere near the school. You stay away from it on the side if you're catching up to it. You stay a couple hundred yards away, 100 yards away. Just keep it sight. You get your boat up ahead and angle it and begin a 90-degree angle to the school, school and have your guy in the bow casting in it. Um, the mistake I saw a lot a couple weeks ago when I was out is guys uh, who really didn't have any idea what, what they were doing. And um, I actually had to leave a couple of breezers because the guys that were fishing them that saw me and stopped the fish were doing it so incorrectly they were not only not catching and they were ruining my chance of catching fish. So this uh, boat on the uh, right here, what this shows is somebody who pulled up to the school and started casting too late. And it, while they're casting over fish, they're not casting over the biting fish. And again, they may get lucky and get a bite, but it's, it's a low percentage play that far back in school. The other boat here on the left is somebody who pulled up to the wrong end of the school because they have no idea which direction the fish are swimming. They actually just see some fish up on the surface, stop the cast. They're going to have one cast in, and then they're not going to be doing anything. Uh, the biggest mistake guys make, and I've seen this a lot, and this happened that Saturday uh, or Friday or whatever it was, is um, guys will see the boiling fish and not pay any attention to the breezer, and instead of realizing, hey, there's a breezer here, they just say, hey, I'm going to run to these boiling fish, and what they do is they drive right through that entire breezer, which is going to scare all those tuna out of there, and by the time you get to those boiling fish, they're just going to be scared away from you. The fish under you are going to go down or go out to the sides. It's going to break apart, and it might be the only shot you get at those fish all day. So, there's no rush with these. It's not like a foamer where they're up biting and foaming and stuff like that. Just pull up, pull up, you know, 100 yards from them, wait, and watch them. Don't do anything erratic. You don't need to speed up to them. Just idle up to them. Just see how they're going. Get yourself in position. Watch them. See how fast they're moving. Kind of judge how far ahead of them you need to be. And then casually put yourself into a place where your cast can go right on the leading edge of that fish. And like I say, you know, the leading edge of that fish is not necessarily the fish you see on the surface. It could be 15 or 20 feet in front of that. So put yourself in a good position. Don't run over the fish. Take your time. It's pretty easy. But that's, uh, that's how you uh, approach freezing tuna.